curtain rises on Act Two of Ellen and Prince Charming, starring William Lundigan as Tom Jordan. For submitting the winning slogan on a quiz program, Ellen Jordan has won herself a Prince Charming. While she and her newfound subject are enjoying a dinner date, Tom, her husband, decides to investigate the personal effects of Prince Charming. He uncovers evidence indicating that the good prince is certainly far from charming. Tom is presently at the telephone, trying to contact the police department. Hello. Hello, operator. Operator, get me the police. Yes, it's an emergency. Hurry, please. Hello. Hello, police department. I want to report a... Oh, never mind. Never mind. Everything's all right now. No, cancel the call. Goodbye. Hello, darling. You're up awfully late, aren't you? I've been waiting for you. Where have you been? Oh, places. We've been dancing, haven't we, Prince Charming? Sure have. <laughs> Ellen, I want to talk to you. Oh, not tonight, dear, in the morning. I said now. What's the matter with you? Come in here. You'll pardon us, Prince Charming. Sure. Tom, will you please explain Ellen, what this is... Ellen, I don't want to alarm you, but I'm just going to ask you a few questions. What happened between you and that man tonight? Happened? Well, nothing happened. We danced, talked, and... What did you talk, talk about? Oh, um, uh, murders. Murders? Mm-hmm. Prince Charming says the average murderer is a dope. Oh, uh-huh, he did. Mm-hmm. He was referring to a case in the newspaper. Prince Charming said he could do it better and he'd never get caught. Says the fellow in the paper used the wrong kind of poison. Too easy to trace. Go on, go on. Well, he says you can kill a person better with dry ice. It evaporates. Oh, uh-huh, he must be a cool cookie. Ellen, you'd better go up to bed and don't worry. Huh? I'll keep an eye open for tonight and wait for him to make a false move tomorrow. Well, then, I don't understand what this you is You will about. soon enough. Now, now, go to bed, dear, and, Helen, yes? be sure to lock your door. But, honey... Do as I say, and remember, darling, I'll be standing by. Good night. <laughs> you, uh, going someplace? Oh. Oh, M- Mr. Jordan, I thought you'd gone to bed. I'll bet you did. I couldn't sleep. I thought I'd have a smoke on the balcony. You mind if I join you? Pleasure. I suppose you usually have trouble sleeping nights. Oh, I usually fall right off. Maybe something's disturbing you. Your conscience, perhaps. Well, I've never done anything that bothers my conscience. Tell me, do you dream? Oh, sure, all the time. What about? Oh, things that most men dream of, I guess. Fame, fortune, Lana Turner. Uh Uh-huh. And do you ever have a specific recurrent dream? Uh Uh-huh. What? The one about Lana Turner. Hmm. Do you ever dream about uh, abandoned wells? What? With bodies in them. Bodies? What kind of bodies? Dead bodies. Sounds gruesome. Yes, doesn't it? Th- do you have nightmares? I do not. Well, I'll bet you will if you keep thinking those morbid thoughts. I don't think morbid thoughts. Well, that's sure a morbid thought. Dead bodies at the bottom of a well. Why, hey, hey wait a minute. How did we get talking about this? Oh, just making conversation. Yes. Well, I think i better go in now. Uh, good night, Mr. Jordan. Good night, Prince Charming. And, uh... Pleasant dreams. Good morning, sir. Good morning, George. Uh, there's a gentleman to see you, sir. No. Mr. Jordan? Yes. Lieutenant Brewer, Police Department. Our precinct received a call at 2.10 a.m. this morning. We traced it to this address. Do you know anything about it? Well, yes. I, I placed the call. What was the complaint? <laughs> well, frankly, Lieutenant, I hesitate to involve my wife and myself. Mr. And Jordan, I... if you're aware of a criminal action, it's your duty to report it. Now, what's the trouble? Well, Lieutenant, I have reason to believe that we have unwittingly been harboring a murderer in this house. A murderer? Sounds like you hit the jackpot. Believe it or not, Lieutenant, that is precisely what happened. Where is the suspect? Upstairs. George, George, will you call Prince Charming? Prince Charming? (laughs) I've heard a lot of aliases, but that beats them all. Uh, He's gone, sir. Gone? Yes, sir. He left early this morning with his luggage. Flew the coop, huh? Well, apparently your suspicions were well-founded. What caused you to first suspect this man? A diary. George and I found it among his personal effects. There's an entry in it about killing a widow named Shaughnessy. Shaughnessy. Mm-hmm. Shaughnessy. Well, it doesn't ring a bell. Well, I'll check with homicide on it. Now, can you give me a description of this man? Yes, he was about 5 foot 11, fair complexion, brown eyes, very close together. Obviously, the criminal type. That's how I have to... Just specific him. details, please. What did he weigh? Oh, about 165. Oh, he came to us from the Cinderella Footwear Company. You know, the one that makes those cheap shoes. Yeah, we'll contact him. I'll have an all-points bulletin sent out. We shouldn't have much trouble picking him up. Anything else about him you can think of? No, I guess not. Well, he may be a bit psychotic, though. He he dreams. About what? Lana Turner. Maybe he's not as crazy as you think. 
You take me. I have dreams, too. You have? Of course, I'm a Hedy Lamar man myself. Every night, the same dream. Hedy and I on a boat to Bermuda. I take her by the hand, look into her eyes, then suddenly it isn't her at all. Who is it? Louis the Gimp, a guy sent up the river ten years ago. Well, we'll contact you as soon as we hear anything. So long. Tommy, where's Prince Charming? In trouble, my love. Well, what do you mean? He took off. The police are hunting him. I didn't want to frighten you last night, dear, but your charming prince is actually a dangerous killer. Oh, he's nothing of the sort. All you right, must be crazy. All right, have it your own way. Only just be thankful I got him out of the house in time. In time for what? Tom, will you stop being so mysterious and tell me what this is all about? It's very simple. I found his diary, and in it was a confession of murder. Murder? Mm-hmm. He killed a widow and left her body at the bottom of a well. You mean the widow Shaughnessy? Yes. Oh, yeah. oh Ellen. no. This isn't anything to laugh at, Ellen. I... The diary of a lost soul. What? It's a story he wrote. His hobby is writing murder mysteries. And you thought... Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> well, he asked me not to. You know how bashful oh, he is. No, no, well, he thought no. people Do you laugh. realize that he could be arrested and he could sue me for false arrest? Uh -huh. He could... We... We've got to get down to the police station right away. Come on. I'm coming, Sherlock. <laughs> See, Lieutenant, the whole thing was a mistake. I, you don't have to do anything about it and just forget it. I, I'm I... afraid it's too late, Mr. Jordan. I was going to call you. We picked up Prince Charming in a downtown hotel about an hour ago. Oh, just well, booked him. Let him go. You can't. What do you mean you can't? Well, it's only a story. Well, he'll have to tell his story to the DA. We've got a hold on him for questions. But he's innocent. Look, Mr. Jordan, all murder suspects are held incommunicado. If the district attorney decides to release him for lack of evidence, he goes. Otherwise, he stays. That's the law, and I can't do anything about it. Well, can we see him? You're the prosecuting witness. You're entitled to identify him. Come on. There he is. Hello, Prince Charming. Hello, Mrs. Jordan. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. Oh, about it's this. all right. You're uh, you're pretty sore at me, I suppose. <laughs> well, I I don't blame you. I should have minded my own business, I guess. Yes, uh, you should have. Oh. Well, my wife is my business. It was really on account of her that well, I... I didn't uh, give you any license to go snooping through my belongings. I was not snooping. You were, too. I think the law regards that as an invasion of privacy. It certainly should. Say, whose side are you on? Not to mention false arrest. Well, I... Well, I, aren't you ashamed of yourself, Tom? Ashamed? Why should I be ashamed? If you hadn't entered that fool contest in the oh, first place... Oh, so it was I who put Prince Charming in the... The... A clink. Thank you. I'm at fault simply because you're a big, big... A snoop. Thank you. Then you have the nerve to come down here and prosecute this poor man. Persecute. Thank you. Now, see here, Ellen. I've had just about enough. Any further remarks? And as far as I'm concerned, Prince Charming can stay here till next Christmas. Ellen, I... Hey, what are you doing? Packing. What for? Well, I think it's fairly obvious. If you think I'm going to stay here and be made the laughing stock of the neighborhood simply because you now made look a here, Ellen, you're taking this thing much too seriously. So I made a mistake, but you don't have to pack up and leave. Well, I don't have to, but I'm going to. Now, if you'll get out of my way, please. Now, Ellen, wait a minute. I have nothing further. Well, to Well, I've say got to something you. to say to you. Listen, Ellen, I love you, and this service doesn't expire after seven days. If you'll kindly stand aside. Oh, you're just making a lot. The of... doorbell. George will answer it. Now, you've got to listen to yes, me, sir. Ellen. Hi. Prince Charming. They let me go. I came over because I had some good news. A Gargoyle magazine bought my story. Oh, that's wonderful. They said it was an account of all the publicity. If it was good enough to get me locked up for murder, they figured it must be pretty convincing. And I want you to know that I am not sore at you anymore, Mr. Jordan. Oh, that's nice of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I turned you. in my resignation today. I'm going to write for a living, going back to Akron and get married. Oh, you've got a girl, Prince Charming? Sure have. I'm in a position now to ask her to change her name to Higginloffer. Higgin what? Higginloffer. That's my real name, Harry Higginloffer. She must love you very much. Well, I better be going. Oh, wait, you've still got another four days to run on the service. If you want another Prince Charming, I'm sure the company will supply you with one. <laughs> Thank you. Well, so long. Goodbye, Prince Charming. Good luck, Higginloffer. Thanks. There, you see how things work out? Well, through no fault of yours. What are you talking about? I was the one who caused all the trouble, wasn't I? I mean, I... I <laughs> oh, it's all right, uh, Tommy. I know what you mean. Oh, I guess I was as much in the wrong as you. Got to feeling sorry for myself with you working every night. Wanted to have a fling. Well, you heard what he said. There's still four days left. Get yourself another Prince Charming. 
Honest, I won't interfere. Oh, no. I think we've had our fill of contests and Prince Charming's. As a matter of fact, I don't ever want to hear the word contest again. I'll get it. Okay. Hello. Speaking. Oh, oh, yes, R.W. Yes, R.W. Yes, R.W. Oh, well, thank you, R.W. Yes, we certainly could. Uh, what? But R.W. But, 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 but R.W. Very well, R.W. Goodbye. What is it, dear? I got the junior partnership. Oh, why, that's marvelous, dear. He said it was very shrewd of me to investigate that Cinderella campaign. Oh, good. And now we're going to buy advertising space. The slogan is, for every Juliet, there must be a Romeo. Mm -hmm. The lady with the best slogan wins herself a Romeo. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, there's just one catch. What? I'm Romeo. Oh, no! <laughs> the curtain falls in the final act of Ellen and Prince Charming. Our star, William Lundigan, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. For the young woman interested in a professional career, here's a real opportunity. The Women's Army Corps now has openings in a wide range of duty specialties, ranging from communications to finance or administration. If you're between 18 and 34, a high school graduate, single and otherwise qualified, the Women's Army Corps offers you an important, exciting future, travel, Specialization, advanced learning. Visit your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station for career details. Now, once again, our star and our producer. The last time William Lundigan visited us, he very modestly announced his co-starring billing in the 20th Century Fox picture, Pinky. Since then, the picture became one of the great films of 1949. And you, Bill, did an outstanding job. Thank you very much, C.P., but you see, we just hoped the picture would do as well as all of us thought it should. It certainly did. I hear you have another film ready to release. Mm-hmm. In fact, we were working on it when I was over here the last time. The title's been changed to Mother Didn't Tell Me. Oh, yes. You co-star with Dorothy McGuire in it. I think it'll be out in a very short time, too. This also is a 20th century mm, Fox picture. Naturally, <laughs> naturally. And by the way, I see that you went on that Hollywood Coordinating Committee tour of Veterans Hospitals. You mentioned you were going last time. Mm-hmm. I covered quite a few hospitals in the Southwest, New Mexico, Arizona, and a part of Texas. I want to tell you, C.P., was mighty impressive. Well, uh, what did you do? Actually, I just visited with the fellows. We talked. In fact, I bumped into some of the fellows that I served with in the 1st Marine Division in the South Pacific, and we had a lot of fun telling lies. They get bigger and bigger each year. I take it you're going back again. You can bet your life I will. Incidentally, C.P., before we run out of time, I, I want to thank you for inviting me over here. Not at all, Bill. We thank you for being with us. Come back whenever you can. Thank you, sir. Oh, incidentally, who's coming over next week? Well, next week, Bill, and ladies and gentlemen, the very beautiful Lorraine Day will be our star, and the title of our story, A Honeymoon for Sale. It's a gay comedy romance, and I know you'll enjoy hearing it. Great. I'll be listening. Goodbye, Bill. <laughs> be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when Lorraine Day joins us in a comedy romance, Honeymoon for Sale. Till then... Thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. William Lundigan appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by Lou Reed, with the music of Eddie Dunstetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Nile speaking.